Good evening, everyone. I apologize. You know, usually we start at 7.30, but we are here tonight to be encouraged, to be encouraged in such a big way. God has such a plan for this show tonight. As you know, every other week we have guests, and, and this show, if you don't know, is called You're Amazing, because God has a plan and purpose for your life. With the election, with all the challenges that people are facing through COVID, I can tell you that right now we need encouragement, we need hope, we need the love of God the Father to come into our hearts in a special way through the power of the Holy Spirit. How are you doing, Immaculata, all the way from Hamilton, Ontario? And tell us where you're from. Tell us why you came on tonight. But I know why you're here, whether it's your first time or when the, whether you come on each and every week and are a fa faithful, faithful viewer. We have so many faithful viewers. I know people from the Philippines, they come on every week. I know people that are all the way from California that are here every week. And I know Randy Scott, he wants Trump. So we know he's here. He's ready for Trump. So we got great things happening tonight. Uh, but we have a special guest. And uh, he's going to be sharing with us about the gift, the gift of our faith in God. He's going to help us with the election. He's going to help us, uh, you know, discern and go through that. And, and he's a good friend of mine. And so I just like to bring on our a great guest, Matt Leonard, and you might know him. He's very well known all throughout the country, even the world. He does pilgrimages. He, he, he speaks all over the country, and he's a good friend of mine. Matt, great to have you out. Justin, great to be with you and everybody else out there. Howdy. <laughs> well, they're, they're rocking here. we got people from Argentina, and we've got people from Baltimore. And so, you know, Matt, share a little bit. Uh, I'm sure many of the EWTN viewers have heard about your ministry share about what you do and what you're doing now and how uh you know god's working through your ministry uh thank you uh, i um i'm the founder of next level catholic academy uh, dot com and it's a it's basically a place where uh i unpack the spiritual life for catholics i mean this is something i think that uh if more catholics would really understand and know the incredible spiritual patrimony that's handed down to us by 2000 years of tradition and teaching from the spiritual giants of our of our faith maybe we wouldn't be looking at some of the problems that we have right now you know uh we uh we need to learn to to pray more we need to learn to dive into more deeper intimacy more deeper that's terrible english deeper intimacy with our lord and the saints tell us how to do it and so at next level catholic academy uh what i do is i unpack step by step uh, how it's called the science of sainthood and there's no we're not treading water here in this life Justin just kind of waiting for Jesus to come back there is a path to God you and I are made for something you talk about it all the time we are made to be children with God in order to enter into that divine family of God we have to become like him and the way to do that is to travel this path towards sanctity and it's not a random road there are literally steps laid out for us uh, by the spiritual giants. And that's what I teach at Next Level Catholic Academy. Matt, that's unbelievable. And, and we have a mission, as you know, we have a missionary program and our missionaries, we train them and form them like you're doing for people to train and help transform people's lives, their spiritual lives to, to be formed as probably a missionary. Because right now I know everybody's like, we need Trump and yeah, it'd be awesome. And, you know, great. And yeah, we, we need pro-life and we need all of these views and all but but i believe we need like you do saints right now who are willing to die for jesus christ and and i think that's what's needed more than everything what are your thoughts on that L listen john paul ii nailed this years ago he said today we must assiduously beg god to raise up saints why because saints are game changers and as yeah. we can see right right across the board <clears throat> the game is in need of change and as much as we want the election to go our way and all the chaos and all the rest of this kind of stuff, at the end of the day, our hope doesn't lie in elections, right? Yeah. Our hope lies in Jesus Christ. And the only way that things are going to change in this world is if you and I take a really hard look in the mirror at our own selves and we are first evangelized so then we can evangelize other people. Yes. And this is on a person by person basis in our little you know, group, our family our and, and our circle of friends and even our enemies for crying out loud. I mean, they need to be evangelized yeah. too. But you can't do that unless you've been first filled up with the Holy Spirit. St. Bernard of Clairvaux, I always bring this up because it's so profound. 
people talk about being channels of grace. You know, there's even a song, make me a channel or whatever. <laughs> we don't want to be channels. We want to be reservoirs because a reservoir, he says, is filled up to the brim and it overflows and feeds and waters everyone around it while never diminishing the, the amount of grace that's inside of that person. That's what we have to do. People have to embrace radical holiness. Otherwise, we're going to be in the same exact position 40 years from now. No, no, and I agree, and especially right now. We've been a maintenance church for too many years. It's like, how do we deal with all these immigrants that came over? How do we deal with all these people that need to be baptized? Now we need to be the ones. I believe, my personal belief, and I think uh, you can help us to understand this better, we need to get to the place where, where people are meeting us and saying, why do you love that way? Why do you live this way? And we go, well, guess what? Are you baptized? Are you Catholic? Do you know Jesus Christ? And I don't think that happens enough. I no, think that, you're, that you're, happens you're up, It's funny, Justin, because growing up Protestant, uh, I'm a pastor's kid and convert to the church 22 years ago. Wow. We, were we were taught to evangelize, right? You talk about your faith. And for some reason, this is just something, the, the Catholic ethos is just a little bit different. And I'm not talking about going out necessarily and beating people head over the head, you know, dragging them into mass. But yeah. that's what you got to do, you know. Uh, but we have to- I've done that at one time. <laughs> I bet you have. <laughs> but you have to develop relationships with people. And uh, even more than, uh, I want to say more than that. In addition to that, it's not just enough to have a relationship with people. They have to be able to see Jesus Christ in you. And for that to happen, for you to become that kind of bonfire of holiness that's going to draw people in from the cold, dark night of sin, they've got to see something in your life that is attractive to them. And the only yeah. thing that causes that is a relationship with Jesus Christ. That's just it. And you can talk to your blue in the face, but unless you're really exuding the love of Jesus Christ, it's just not going to be attractive to anyone. For, for sure, like tonight, I'm, I'm driving uh, our basketball team home. I'm dropping off, you know, four or five kids in the city. And uh, one of the kids is in the back. He's going, hey, coach. He's like, I read my Bible this morning, right? But he knows I coach him basketball. But he knows to get extra playing time. He's like, I got to tell coach that I read my Bible because I know the Bible's important to coach. And I think like whether you're a coach, whether you're a teacher, whether you're a business leader, whether we're like us evangelists as, as well as theologians and, and leaders and formators, every single one of us, the first thing I believe they should share with us is that they love the word of God. And I just had Mark Hart on. He was the last guest I had on two weeks ago. And it was so great. And that's why I love talking with you is Right now, more than ever, we need to get our Catholic brothers and sisters to really realize that it's their job to help form people in the Word of God. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, it's a no-brainer, right? I mean, Jesus gave us the Bible for a reason, uh, and, and he gave us the church for a reason, and the church gives us the Bible, right? And this is the, the kind of the mistake that I had in my own life before I became Catholic. We read the Bible through the eyes and the heart of the church. And... What I think is it's not on one hand, scripture obviously is vitally important, but you've got to learn to be able to pray through sacred scripture. I mean, yes, if, if, if you and I are designed to be in relationship with God and we are created for something that's beyond our wildest dreams, like we can't even fathom it. Right. Uh, then that means we're headed somewhere. And if we're headed somewhere, there's a path and prayer and the sacraments are the things that propel us down this path toward God. And obviously sacred scripture informs uh, our prayer life because you're conversing with the divine when you're, when you're praying in sacred scripture. So it, it needs to be a part of everyone's life because you can't, how do you fall in love with somebody you don't know, Justin? I mean, the doors, you know, hello, I love you. Won't you tell me your name? Total <laughs> disaster of a song, right? I mean, come yes. on. you can't fall in love with Jesus Christ unless you know him and you know him by reading his words in sacred scripture, you know him by receiving him in the Eucharist and letting the grace of that Eucharist just fill you up with his presence and set that word that you already heard in the mass or you've done in your private reading on fire inside of you. That's how it works. So we have to have sacred scripture. We better learn our Bibles, guys, because it's our book. Yes, yes. And right now with this election, because I, I know we're talking about it a lot. Reason I talk about the word of God and then talk about the election is, is that 
we have to let the word of God speak to us is what is he calling us? How should we view this election as an American? And even people who are watching tonight on this EWTN show across the world, even them, I'm sure they're looking at with Trump and Biden, the whole deal. What's your thoughts? I'm interested, like, if you were forming someone, go, look, this is how you should look at the election right now. What are you? I know it's a tough question, but what are your thoughts? I would say, first off, is, you know, we, we know, even if we don't get the result that we want. Of course. God is still in control, right? Uh, Romans 8, 28 promises that. God is going to write straight with our crooked lines no matter what. And he's been doing it since day one. So we have to realize that prayer is really more about changing us. It doesn't change God. He's unchangeable. It changes us so that we can have more surety and more peace in our interior life, that his will is going to be done one way or the other. The question is, are we on board and are we cooperating with his good and holy, perfect will? And, and my kind of, like, I was, I was in as much angst on election night as everybody else. I couldn't sure. sleep. I, I got barely any sleep. I woke up the next morning. And I always get up before my, my wife and kids and because that's the time I have to pray. And I, I was so tempted to grab my phone and check and see what happened. You know? yeah, and yeah. I decided, no, I'm not going to do it because I know that's going to be a distraction to me. I'm not going to be able to enter into the presence of God. So I open up sacred scripture. Or I open up the divine office and I start reading through. And the first verse I come down to in the morning readings was Psalm excuse me, Revelation 22, 11. So with all the angst of the election and all the rest of it, this is Psalm 22, 11. Excuse me, Revelation 22, 11. The righteous must still do right and the holy still be holy. Period. Regardless of what is taking place all around us, you and I both know there's only so much we can control. But we can pray. We can fast. What we have to be careful of in the midst of all of this is... Frankly, saying things that we're going to regret later. Amen. You know, scripture promises that we're going to have to account for every careless word we utter. I took James as my confirmation name when I became Catholic because James chapter 3 talks about how the tongue is a fire. And I need him to kick my rear end all the time. Catholics, yep. we, have to, we have to mind our tongues and, and be holy even in the midst of the onslaught of evil. Uh, and... And you know what, Justin, just this, this one kind of gets me when people are like, well, I guess all we can do now is pray. Well, on one hand, yeah. But you know what? If we had been praying more the rest of the time, we wouldn't be necessarily in this fix. Catholics yep. have to embrace a deep life of daily prayer. And, and as I pray my rosary every day. You got to pray your rosary every day. But it's more than that. right? It is entering into an intimacy with our Lord. Because really, the spiritual life is really nothing more than an intensification of your prayer relationship with God. That's what it's all about. You want to enter into an intimacy with our Lord. And that changes you. It starts to change the people around you. And then we won't have to worry about elections anymore. Well, well I agree with that. I think why we're worried about elections right now is that we don't have, any, we don't have enough missionaries and formed Catholics that are like evangelizing properly. Like we wouldn't be in this mess because they'd be on our team. They would be, they'd be fighting for pro-life. They, they'd be fighting for, you know, even unwed, you know, mothers who are suffering. They'd be fighting for the homeless. They'd be fighting, and we would be all, all on the same team. And I think we need, we need right now, it seems so simple. But I think right now, God forbid we lose, right? But let's just say we do. It's, there should be such a passion and urgency and zeal inside our hearts, regardless. But if we lose, especially, it, this is on us. We have to have character. And when something goes the wrong way, what's our character going to be? That's, that's what I'm looking at. It's kind of like, you know, I've gotten beat up a lot, you know, in my journey. But in that journey of getting beat up, how do I respond to people who beat me up? You know, do I go beat them up more? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what's that going to do? You know what I mean? Like, so, you know, sometimes we can be so right in our wrongness, you know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, if that makes sense. No, it does. You know what I think, Justin? I think that uh, I think we've become too assimilated, right? Uh, and, and what is there about us 
that's different than everybody else because we look like everybody else, we talk like everybody else, we live like everybody else, right? So why is it that people should take a hard look at us and, and turn and follow us? I, I, I say at conferences a lot, I'm like, isn't it crazy that a, a group of people with more than a billion members somehow has lost its place as the primary influencer on, on culture? Why is that? Well, it's because not enough of us are actually practicing what is preached. And uh, there's no excuse for that. We have every, I don't care if you're getting a bad homily. I have great priests in my parish. I know that some people complain about their homilies. Who cares? Yeah. You know what? Who cares? Jesus is there, first of all, you get the grace of the sacraments, and you have so many avenues to be able to learn your faith, faith so that you can proclaim it in joy and in love. And if you don't have that desire in your heart to share your faith, then, then you really have to take a hard look at what you're doing in your spiritual life. And everybody's personality is different. I get that, right? We have natural inclinations and tendencies. So you're not going to talk about it the same way I will. Uh, but still there should be that fire inside of us you know saint paul says we're supposed to pray constantly what does that mean it means we're in intimate relationship with lord the lord on a moment by moment basis and if you're in an intimate relationship with somebody you want to tell everybody like when i first met my wife i was like man you gotta see this girl i met oh my goodness yep. well it's like that with god right yep we should be wanting to share the faith because of what he's done in our lives and we know that he can do the same thing for you I so share that faith. So, yeah, I mean, I think as we go from here, I think what I want to do just like to really close up our, our show tonight, because I think, you know, you're somebody, you know, with a platform, somebody who loves God. And we do something called passion and we do it every now and then with our viewers where we just share the greatest challenge we've ever been through, what we're most thankful for. And what we need prayers for. And then here, they'll comment below the same question. So right now, all of you out there, start sharing what's your greatest challenge you face. Might be the election, might be the situation. But no, personally in your life. And, and uh, you know, for me, I just want, want you, my greatest challenge is really with all of these distractions, with COVID, is really when I'm praying being able to totally focus because it's like I've never prayed so much, but yet prayed so little, if that makes sense. <laughs> totally. right? right. And it's a challenge for me right now. And and what's your challenge out there? But Matt, what's your challenge just for viewers out so they know, hey, right now in our country, we have to face that challenge in our own heart. Well, number one, I go back to what I said a second ago, you just, you know, guarding your tongue because our passions are running hot right now and we have to be able to control those. And you do that by engaging in prayer. But mine would be, if I was just to pick one, it would be the exact same thing you just said, Justin. And, and here's a little tidbit to throw in there from St. Teresa of Avila. If we are to the point where we are like so inundated with all the election coverage and all the rest of that kind of stuff, it's taking over our lives and it's consuming everything about us to the point where we can't engage in prayer. Like it's distracting us and we know it's distracting us. Yes. We have to stop. We have to stop and get it out because St. Teresa of Avila says that these kind of voluntary distractions, like there's involuntary and voluntary. So involuntary, something happens to you, you know, whatever, you get distracted. She says, as soon as you come back to your senses, you give it back to God and everything's good. A voluntary distraction is one where you are doing something even though you know it's going to keep you from having that conversation with the Lord. And here's the kicker. It's a venial sin. It's not just a distraction. It's a venial sin. When I first heard yeah. that, I was like, what? But it's true. When you think about it, it makes sense because... You're basically choosing something other than God. You're like, well, God, you know, reruns of burn notice are more important to me, or election <laughs> coverage is more important to me. I've been, been in the rock deleted scenes. That's what I got into today. <laughs> hey, I started watching like, all the deleted scenes in Rocky Bobo. Oh man, I could totally see you doing that. You just want to <laughs> run up those stairs. Da, 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 da. Yeah, I, I I hear you. But if you know what, Justin, if the deleted scenes of Rocky are keeping you from Jesus Christ, you better get Rocky out of there. I'm house. in trouble. Get Rocky out of here. <laughs> so it's distractions for me as well. And I have to guard. I, I kind of shut down a lot of the coverage because I know it was just causing me so much angst. And I need to be at peace in order to enter into conversation with God. This stuff is supremely important. You keep praying your guts out. 
But if it's dis- if it's distracting you and if it's really messing with your interior piece, you got to take a hard look at what you need to get rid of. For sure. And I think the whole country needs to do that right now because yeah. there's a lot of souls that we're not able to win. Because if I can win the soul, that could be the next president who's who, you know, could be that missionary president that leads our country all back to Jesus Christ. You know, maybe the person out there who who could really make that difference in uh, a, a million souls in this country. Who knows who God could use us, but we can control that. We can't control the election and those other things, even though we have to stand for pro-life and we have to stand for the truth and say, you know what, this is the pro-life president and we have to be on board that 100%. But what's your challenge during the election, COVID? All of the viewers, what's your challenge that you're facing? And you know what helps me get through my challenges? And I, I think you'd agree, like, it's being grateful. So, Matt, you start. Like, what are you most grateful for as a leader? Uh, I, You know, I know this is so simplistic, but I really believe in it. I believe we need to simplify our faith for, for people in America right now. But you know what? I'm, I'm grateful to be Catholic. I know that sounds so broad sweeping. You know, I'm so glad to be a part of of this church it's the pearl of great price and yes we sully it with our sin but it remains the pearl of great price and our job is to try to you know shine it as much as we possibly can because i can't imagine trying to deal with the world as it is without the truth and the grace and the beauty of jesus christ as given to us by the catholic faith yeah and i'm so grateful like uh you know i know my assistant, as well as all the people that plan this show, that I've had such great guests like yourself, Matt, come on here, who like we've had, you know, meals together and I've had other guests on. And like I've really seen, I know a lot of people see the divisiveness in the church and, and that is there and it's, br- it's, it's loud and clear and I see it. But I've also seen, and I'm very grateful for, I've seen like a lot of people coming together. Have you seen that? Uh, and, and during COVID, where people have been coming together more as Catholics? I, I certainly think that in a lot of ways, it's kind of, I don't want to say level the playing field. Um, it, it actually, it never ceases to amaze me that we'll fight over anything. And I think that <laughs> with something, when something like, you know, COVID, or a, however serious it is, we don't even know, right? Uh, we're all dealing with it. And so we're all dealing with the same thing and we're going to approach it different ways. And so, yeah, there's a togetherness there because it's us against this thing, whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, but I just, you know, take that as a point of encouragement for people too, that hey, we got to stop fighting because divisiveness is just from the, the evil one. It's a spirit of division. And frankly, it's just demonic. And yeah. we have to love each other through all of this. And, that, that, and I don't mean like gooey, whatever kind of love. I mean, Love, right? Real love, nitty gritty love. We want to see love. It's a crucifix. It's self gift. It's death to self for the sake of the other. That's how it is. We have to treat even our enemies, not just our friends and family, even our enemies, because that's how we live like Jesus Christ. Yeah, no, you're right. And I, I think, you know, like Galatians 5 19 25 talk, talks about intensely like dissensions and factions and, and you know, lust of the flesh and envies and all of those things we have to just die to ourselves and right now i think in this country we have to be that model i'm so grateful like you said for our catholic faith that it challenges us to love our enemies like maria goretti did and had that great conversion and you know all the great examples of the saints uh so i'm just so grateful as well i mean i've been going to daily mass during this you know i have a bishop myself who you know, he, he is saying mass for us every Monday. I don't know if that would happen, like, if this wasn't going on. Yeah, my priest added masses. I mean, <laughs> that's the most, it's fantastic. The guy added masses. That's and, great to hear. Oh, it was, it, he's, a real, he's a real pastor and a real shepherd. And, and just think about this, guys. If we all go to these same masses, we all are literally partaking of the body, blood, soul, and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ. Right? Yes. We are literally part of the same body. Yeah. And as family members, yeah, we can argue and, you know, whatever. But at the end of the day, we're family. 
And, and we can't throw each other under the bus. We have to realize there's a reality to the union that we have in Jesus Christ. But it's not just us against the rest of the world. We want those people to come into this body yes. so they can partake of the same thing we do. We have to keep that in mind when we are dealing, even with these really hot-blooded political issues that are going on right now, we have to keep that at the forefront. We have to be Jesus to these people. For sure. It's it's kind of like you never know what somebody's going through. Like Ellen right here says, I lost my husband in December, man. She said, I have a huge problem with an insurance company. Uh, they're making me you know, pay for a retaining wall and she needs prayers. Uh, pr I pray to God that God will bless me and, and get these things done. So what do you have to say to this lady along with the others of, of Ellen? What does God put on your heart for her and for all those that have challenges right now and need prayers? Yeah, the thing we always have to fall back on is this. God is our Father, right? And, and that's just not metaphorical language. There's a reality there. And it's, sometimes it's hard for us uh, to view Him in the correct terms, in the correct frame, as God the Father, because maybe we had issues with our own dads or whatever, because we have human fathers. I'm a human father, and I fail miserably all the time. But we have to fall back on the fact that God is our Father, he loves us more than we can possibly imagine. And he knows exactly what is going on in your situation. He knows exactly what it is that you need at every moment. And we have to trust that whatever is happening to us that's bad, the suffering, he is permitting it for some reason that only he, maybe he, we, maybe we don't ever know on this side of heaven. But he always has our eternal end in mind. Doesn't mean he wants us to be miserable in this life. He didn't cause suffering, right? But he might permit it for our sake. And our job is to get to the place where we are accepting and saying, okay, God, I give this back to you because I can't deal with this. You have to help. And he will. He will. And he's never late, but he's never early either. That's the problem. No, he's always, <laughs> he's always got you on the edge going, God, help yeah. us. But Ellen, you know, we just tell you that, as Matt said, the Father loves you so much. And Melinda's here, and she's saying, look, my family's separating because of this election, and they're just terrible to each other. And, and I think that's what you're speaking on. We really have to pray that this isn't going to divide our families. You know, I have people in my own family that, you know, are, you know, on the other side, let's say, and really think I'm out of control. But that needs to help me to respond with more tears of love for them and more, like, heart for them to not judge them you know i i told a missionary so he said look it's out of your operational jurisdiction to judge yourself if you hate yourself you don't have the authority to hate yourself you don't have who do you think you are you know like you don't have the authority to to hurt somebody else god gives us the authority to love and to be loved and so what do you need prayers for I know I need prayers to love my enemies, like you said, and to do that in even more of a deeper way. And I think this election season and COVID season, we need to be more sensitive to that. And we need to cry for our enemies more than judges. St. Gemma says, first we must learn to suffer, then we can learn to love. First we must learn to be humiliated, then we can learn to love. So what do you need prayers for this time, this last question we have, this passion? Me? Um... Well, I tell you what, Justin, I, I want to trust more. Uh, I want to let go of some things in my life that, uh, that I know are holding me back from even deeper intimacy with our Lord. One of these is the election. I'll be honest. I mean, it's, it's <laughs> hard, hard, right? Hard. It's yeah. so hard to let go of this. Uh, because there are obviously repercussions and you're like, but Lord, how many unborn? Lord, how many, you know, he knows, he knows. And, and, but I have to be able to let go of this. It's all about trustful surrender to divine providence. He is in control regardless of how things look on the ground. And his will is going to be accomplished one way or the other. He is always in control. That doesn't mean there aren't going to be consequences for things we do. Obviously there are. But I, I need to learn to let go more of, of these things and just have more trust. That's, that my, that's my first prayer. My second one is that I just guard my tongue. I, I really... My passions run hot. I'm, I'm one of those kinds of guys. I mean, I know you're not. You're totally demure and all that. You never say what's on your mind. I'm but very chill, I'm calm. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, and sometimes you're like, come on, God, bring down the fire, right? Do something. <laughs> come on, something. It, it, you know what the fire is? The fire is the Holy Spirit. 
you know, that's that's the fire, the fire of love. That's what I want to come out of my because no one ever comes into the church and comes to the truth because you beat them over the head in an argument. They come in because that's of it. love. And that's it sounds mushy and gushy. It's the hardest thing in the world. Yep. Peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, compassion, self-control. It's the only way. Generosity, you know, like so we've got to be those people. And I'm with you. And I'd ask everyone tonight to, to do us a favor. And I think this is uh, something that you'd be on board with. And I, I know you love your family so much. Uh, and I think it's one of my, my favorite things. I was driving back with my son the other day. And it was, it was a very neat moment for me. He said, Dad, he says, I want to be a dad. That's like, awesome. And it, like, touched me so much because – I was more self-focused, I guess, when I was his age. I, I was never like a 15-year-old kid thinking about being a dad. I was thinking about, I don't know, some girl or something or <laughs> myself or, or something that had no, had nothing to do with that. And I think we need to pray with our families for this election, pray with our families for our enemies. And uh, I think all of you tonight, if you have a family member, you know, we're going to pray our rosary and I ask all of them, sure, if you haven't prayed your rosary, pray for the election, pray for uh, the spirit of peace, patience, kindness for ourselves and for the world. And uh, is there any last thoughts you have of, of something someone could do for prayer or fasting just for this election and everything going on? Well, you know, what? I, I think that we just have to pray. I mean, and, and when we talk about praying, it's not a one off event. It's not just an election centered event. Catholics, listen, if there's one thing that we could do to just radically transform the, the world, it would be to set just even if you start with 10 or 15 minutes a day, like if you're just starting at this, to set that time aside for God and enter into that communion with him and distractions are going to happen and all the rest of it. Yeah, it's going to happen, right? Because you're human. But over time, as it goes by, you're going to find that time goes faster because you're starting to do what it is that you were made for. But it won't just transform you. It's going to transform the world around you. But you have to set aside time every single day to be yep. with our Lord and enter into meditative prayer with him. And this is just crucial. I mean, it it is without it. You know what? Without it, you're just you're not going to make it to heaven because prayer is your relationship with God. Right. And you have to have it. So set that time aside again, not just for the election, but for your own interior life and for the sake of the salvation of people around you. A hundred percent. And I'd just like to thank you for for coming on, uh, um, you know, our show this week and, and being an encouragement and all the meals, you know, the few meals that we've had together. It's always been fun. And I know our guests really appreciated you being here and uh, just continue the good work. You know, and never stop. Right back at you, man. And you know, I I have I host the Art of Catholic podcast, and I close every one of them with Romans twelve twelve. It's kind of a, a mantra verse, and I think it's just so apropos in in where we are right now. And and it says, rejoice in hope, endure in affliction, persevere in prayer. And that just kind of that's everything. That's everything. That's everything. Well, God bless you, Matt, and uh, you know. Keep hugging your family and keep keep crying for your enemies. That's right. you got, I, got, I cry for my enemies all the time. Like, I got to love these people. Justin, you got an listen, enemy, man. Or you got a friend in Jesus. Listen, keep doing the work that you're doing because you are, you're firing people up for the Lord and you're keeping <laughs> reminding them what it is that is most important. And it all has to revolve around love. And the things that you are doing in the lives of especially young people around the world and, and others, not just young people, but is really, really important. So thank you for what you do. And thanks for having yeah. me on. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, I love you, man. And uh, I'll see you soon, though. I'll, I'll see you. I was in Ohio recently. I got, I got out on tour, if you can believe it. I was in Kansas. Oh, in <laughs> I hope Governor Cuomo didn't find out. <laughs> I was going to no. say. He's Italian, so he might give me a pass. Who knows? I don't know. Maybe you can love me. I'm probably his biggest enemy. Out there. But God bless you, man. I love you so much. God bless you. Wasn't that great? That's great. Prayer. Persevere in prayer. In turn affliction, right? We got to rejoice always. If we do that, we're going to be just fine. 
But I want to let you know that each and every one of you, you come on here each and every week, uh, Teresa and Diane and Ellen, it was great to have you on. If this was your first time, I'm, it was a great night for you because I'm sure you got encouraged. But thank you for being one of the over 3 million viewers on Facebook Live uh, that have come on. And thank you for being a part of my life. You can follow uh, us uh, at Justin Batik or at Your Amazing HN on uh, our YouTube page or all social media platforms. But please remember that God has a purpose for your life. You're a part of the amazing nation. What does that mean? It means you surrender to Jesus Christ. You receive the Eucharist as much as possible. And you know what you do? You do what Matt said. You love your enemies. Love them. Love them like they've never been loved before. And they go, what? You don't believe in what I believe. Why do you love me? Go torture them. Torture anybody that's messing with you. Go torture them. And torture them with what? With love, with kindness. Do it the St. Therese of Leisure way. Do it the St. Teresa of Avila way. Do it the Maria Goretti way. And you can join me each and every Thursday night at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for more Facebook Live sessions like these. Go give somebody a hug, even your enemy. God bless you all. It's great to have you.